All right, thank you everyone for being here tonight. I appreciate it. I'm Doug Lapp, I'm the town administrator, and we appreciate you taking your time tonight. We have a number of people here that I wanna quickly introduce. Uh, we have the assistant town administrator, Jen Constable. Uh, we have our recreation director, Jean Blaney. From our recreation committee, we have Rich Furlong and Karen Fulton are here as well. I'm gonna mention Peter Yule, Parks Department Superintendent, everybody knows Peter. And then especially tonight, I wanna to introduce our two architects from Schwartz and Silver, we have Angela Ward Hyatt and John Traficante. So I think the purpose, as you all know, we're gonna have a, uh, we're gonna kick off our first public outreach meeting for a proposed new recreation and community center. Um, and you're gonna hear a lot of interesting ideas um, from Jean and from the architects, and then they're gonna turn it over to you for any comments and questions and input that you might have as we just begin this process. Uh, so again, thank you for being here tonight, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jean Blaney. Thanks, Doug. Um, so, public speaking is not my thing. I will do the best that I can, but I'm gonna do a little bit of reading off of the notes that I have, so bear with me. Um, so as you said, as Doug said, my name is Jean. I'm the Recreation Director. I've been the Director for nine years. I've actually been in the rec Recreation Department for 12 years. And um, we've, we're Rockland residents, my husband and I, and my two kids. Um, we live over on Turner Road, and we've been here for about 21 years. Um, and I say about, because I can't really remember the exact date, but it's, it's at least around 21. Um, so um, Doug already did all of the introductions, so he stole my thunder on that one. But um, when I started the department, um, at the department, it was myself and Casey Regan who was here. Um, there was, it was just the two of us. Um, now, in our department, we have, still have the two full-time employees, eight year-round part-time employees, 21 seasonal employees, eight volunteers, and we work with eight, roughly eight to 10 vendors to run our programs. Um, we've added the Rockland Markets, who Allison is here. She's, she's known well around town now, and she also works with our events. Um, originally, we had no events. Now we have six, soon to be seven events added to, um, added to our repertoire along with the Rockland Markets. So just to give you an idea of how much we've actually grown as a department, when we started, the year before we started, we took in 1,219 registrations. Sounds pretty impressive. But last year we took in 5,299 registrations. And this year we are on track to do approximately 7,000 registrations. Although don't hold me to that one, so it could be a little less. Um, in 2014, we, um, we, Casey and I talked about taking over the teen center. No one was doing the teen center. Um, so we slowly built that program up and to date we serve 50 to 60 middle school students every Friday night. And I just a little plug, if anyone wants to volunteer, please let me know because we always have a waiting list. Um, which is a, a great problem to have, but we'd like to service more kids. Um, during the pandemic, a lot of people asked, well, what did recreation do? Well, we did a lot of things. We sat on a lot of Zoom calls, listened to a lot of CDC, blah, blah, blah. And, um, but most importantly, we got to service the community. We delivered Meals on Wheels to our aging residents along with the veterans. Um, we worked on a food insecurity program um, through in the town and then um, so after after the pandemic kind of we went through all, a little bit of the pandemic and we un were in an understanding of actually what COVID was we were able to service the community by presenting programs safe events um, and more importantly summer programs which I know that some of you here actually sent your kids to so thank you very much um, we did our Easter Bunny drive through through town. Thank you, Peter Yule, drove the truck. We had the bunny on the back waving to everybody because we were social distance. And, um, and then we did a few other various events throughout the next couple of years. So today you can take a look at our website, our social media, just to see what else we have going on. You can certainly call the department, give us a call, send us an email. We'll be happy to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, so, Today, as you can see, we have several groups that um, are in our current building. Um, sometimes they're on a seasonal basis. Um, others are year round. And we primarily house these programs in our basement level, first and second floor. 
So over the past nine years, it became part of my responsibility to take care of the community center with longtime volunteer, and I mean longtime, like from the beginning, Rich Furlong, um, as well as Lauren Kingston, our custodian. So during that time, we had spent countless hours trying to be creative with the funding that we have to take care of our facility, um, to repair it so that it would be in good working order. I personally have spent many hours with vendors, and when I say many hours, I know I, that sounds light, but it's not, um, getting quotes and repairs on the building. The building is 114 years old, so you can only imagine the types of repairs that need to be done to a 114-year-old building. Um, only to have no success, right? So some of these guys, they walk away saying, yeah, I don't know how to do that repair, or yeah, you're, you're obsolete and um, you just need something that's new. So we've had some success though with some of the mechanics that we've done, um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So as I mentioned um, on this slide, um, the, the outside of the building is really what we call the envelope of the building. That's in, in some dire need. Um, we need to repoint the building. Our gymnasium floor tiles, um, Lauren has spackled them so that they're nice and even and the kids bought basketballs or pickleballs don't go to the left or the right. Um, as you can see, Olivia, um, who's now my administrative assistant, is standing in an obsolete women's bathroom that we use as part of our storage. Um, you see our exit door right above her and then above that we recently had a leak in the building and um, as a result of that, you know, we, we've got to take care of the insulation and so on and so forth. Um, up in the top left hand corner is actually the teen center. That's actually not a bad picture, but behind those black couches, we have holes that um, unfortunately uh, we haven't had anybody, no one will come back to the building to repair them. So that's an ongoing project of mine. And then um, more importantly, the rubber on the stairs is beginning to come off the stairs. So that's another repair that um, will soon be taking place. So, you know, as we go along, repairs become more costly because like I said, it's a 114 year old building. Um, so, how do we know that everything's gonna become more costly? I'm gonna ditch my notes and actually work off the slide. So in 2019, we did a feasibility study on our building. The rent of the, the and to renovate the entire building um, ended up being $23 million. But that was back in 2019. So you can only imagine what that might be today. Um, it didn't really include renovation or replacement of the gym. Um, we have a rear accessibility ramp that really needs to be done. And our play area is very obsolete. The insurance company doesn't like it. Um, but they still continue. So we do little things here and there so that the play area can can remain as is. So um, after many years, we've now been exploring a possible solution at Hartsuff Park. So Hartsuff Park, for those that don't know, is primarily where all of our programs are housed. Um, we have programs in the fall there. We have flag football. We have soccer. We have taught baseball. We have um, just about anything you can imagine. More importantly, our summer program. So um, our summer program, when I first started, and it was 50 kids. I think somewhere today we have around 300, maybe more, Casey, um, at Hearts of Park. So for that to become the hub of a community center, a recreation facility, I think would be um, per a perfect exploration. And so didn't when we did our um, usage plan on Hearts of Park, they actually put a building in there um, on the plan, this is again just uh, just a possibility. Um, so, yeah, that was it. Well, thanks, Me. Jean. So. <coughs> thanks, Jean. Yeah. Um, we are very early on in a feasibility study, and really tonight, what we'd like to do is kind of get input from from you all and from the community about what uh, you want most in a new community center. And um, so, what we'll start with is of some initial ideas. Um, we'll look at what the goals of the study are. The goals are to kind of understand obviously what you all want and what works best for the community. Uh, but for us, it's to determine 
uh, what that overall size <coughs> ends up being. So we can then kind of look at it on the site, where it might fit on the site, and also what it might cost, because we understand that, of course, is a big part of this. So the program, the larger program, um, could in influence the cost. So as we go through this, I think what we're looking for tonight is any sort of comments, any suggestions that you might have for the center. Um, some of the things that we've in, in envisioned so far for the building, um, fitness, uh, court space, potentially a walking track above the court, an exercise room, a place where it uh, could be used by all members of the community, young and old. Uh, community meeting spaces, spaces for teens, potentially a maker space, and Angela will kind of walk through each of these spaces and just start to talk about ideas that we have been thinking about, uh, the types of the, these types of spaces. Um, and then also, I know currently at, the, at the, uh, high, the old high school site, when your kids are in programs, there really is no space for the parents to wait for the kids to finish up in those programs. So potentially the idea of a place for waiting or observing, ob observing the sports that they might be playing or activities or plays, things like that. So with right. that, I'm going to yep. turn it over to Angela. Okay. By the end of this, you're maybe going to have a, <coughs> a rough idea of how to read an architectural plan. Um, but we're still at the very, like John said, very initial stages of this study. Um, and what we've done, um, we've kind of done a little homework already and um, kind of we're presenting you with what we think is kind of a kit of parts. Um, that should be fine-tuned to your community. Um, and the kit of parts has various pieces to it. So you've kind of, this is a diagram um, showing um, a kit of parts for a recreation, a new recreation building. Um, and uh, the biggest piece, the building block, the biggest <laughs> building block in this, in this kind of diagram is obviously the gymnasium. And here we're showing a diagram showing two full courts that could be subdivided. So that's the biggest piece. These are these spaces are are kind of like rooms. They're relatively to scale. So you see that's the biggest. Um, the maker room is smaller. The exercise room is somewhere in between. Um, the lines connect spaces that want to be kind of connected to each other um, physically or visually. So um, you'll see. Certain spaces like the exercise room, the cafe seating, multi-purpose room, which I'll go into detail, a little more detail later, those are all have a line connecting them to the gym. So that says we want some sort of connection. Maybe we're looking into the gym, maybe we're close to the gym, something like that. So this is all very, very diagrammatic, and we're going to walk you through kind of the major um, spaces for this. So the first set of spaces is probably, yeah. Does the gym now have two full courts? No. no, so the gymnasium now is an elementary sized gym. Yeah. And sure nope, it, it's only, it's considered one court and it's just an elementary <laughs> sized gymnasium. <laughs> no, it's a great question. Yep. Um, so the first, um, and, and we'll, we'll reserve some uh, time for questions at the end. Um, so, uh, and we'll, we can go back through these plans as we need to, to answer questions. Um, so the first couple uh, set of spaces are, are what we call the fitness spaces. So this is in a way kind of the heartbeat of the new recreation building. Um, so you see the gym and the exercise room, which are kind of connected. So what could those look like? These are not your building. These are examples to kind of get your creative juices flowing about what a gym might look like with a possible walking track around the perimeter of the of the upper level. Um, we're interested to know if that's something that that you as a community are interested in. It's something we're seeing a lot in recreation buildings of similar sizes. Some other spaces are um, off to the right here are a couple examples of, of exercise rooms in similar community centers. So the reason that um, we had talked about doing a walking track and exercise rooms, just throughout the years, I, I've talked to several people, and these are a couple of the items that um, we've actually discussed or I've discussed with some of the public. 
And you can see in this uh, photograph, you see the exercise room actually looking into the gym. So now we're going to kind of zoom in a little closer um, and say, well, how, do, how did we, how did we uh, sh draw a gym of that size? What goes into the thinking behind that? Well, we're actually um, we're showing three different options. The one that we included in, in the diagram was this one here on the right, which is two full courts. And these would be high school size courts, not the elementary size courts. Um, it would have a, a, a curtain or a divider down the middle so that you could use each one independently. And importantly, we would have seating in all of these courts, a little bit of seating, not a lot, um, so that uh, parents um, could and other spectators could, could watch what's going on. So we have three different options. We have a single court, we have one and a half courts, and we have two courts. And all of these could have a walking track above. And depending on where these are on the site, we could also look at <coughs> opportunities to open uh, the spaces to the outdoor because we're now talking about a mm -hmm. site that has an adjacency which could be a playing field. So you could literally have uh, doors that open up on one end of the court and could spill out to the outside. And so we'll be kind of coming back to this and c getting some input about how many courts do we think are necessary here. Um, Obviously, it's a cost issue. You know, half the size is half the cost. So the next, oh, so here's a little zoomed-in diagram of that two-court um, gymnasium. So you might be able to see a little bit more detail. You, you can see that we're, we're putting dimensions in. Um, we have some team benches. We have a couple rows of, of bleachers on each side. Here's that movable curtain. Um, you can see the, the gymnasium striping. Um, these little symbols are doors. Um, so there's a lot of thought that's going into how to plan for these spaces um, to get the right size. So, and I know that we're a big basketball community, but we're also, we have a pretty robust volleyball program. Um, we cannot really house pickleball because of the flooring that we have. It's very slippery and, um, so we, we've tried to, and we're still open to it, but um, I know that that's been some of the feedback that we've gotten. Um, so this would be a lot of pickleball courts, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so the other component of this fitness uh, grouping is obviously the exercise room. So we're, um, we're, we're, we kind of uh, generated a preliminary equipment list of what could be in the room and laid it out in a space to test out, well, what size room would you need to accommodate that equipment? Um, so the list is off to the side here. We have uh, four treadmills. Those are treadmills. Um, the ellipticals, oops, sorry, ellipticals are here. Uh, rowing machines, stationary <coughs> bikes, um, uh, uh, a bar with a mirror, a weight machine, dumbbells. Um, we were imagining a space that would have natural light and possibly overlooking the gym, as I had mentioned earlier. So the next grouping of spaces um, after fitness is what we're calling the game room and lounge. Um, so you see that here, um, this blue rectangle at the bottom of the screen. Again, that would be something that could have some sort of visual or physical connection to the gym. But you see it's also connected to spaces that I'll that you haven't heard about yet that I'll, that I'll describe shortly, the multi-purpose room and the cafe. So what could this game room lounge <coughs> space look like? Well, this, these are s some examples from, from other projects. Um, this room um, would have um, seating, a, a different kinds of seating, some soft seating, some, um, a lot of games, uh, storage, um, could be a really fun space. Big TVs, gaming could happen in this space. Um, it's, um, it's meant to be a space for, um, for all ages, uh, uh, although we would imagine it would be very popular with the teens. So our teen center right now has three very, very small monitors. These, the, the kids love the gaming room. They actually have to sign up in order to use the gaming room, and I think... Um, 
Diane, what do they spend five or ten minutes? They're allowed to play a game and then come back out. Twenty minutes at a time. Twenty minutes at a time, and then we rotate them in. So there, there actually isn't enough monitors and gaming um, consoles. So, and they can't actually have tournaments either. So the kids really like to have tournaments. I'm not a gamer. I don't really understand it all. However. <laughs> They've tried to explain it to me, as a matter of fact, on Friday night. So, um, <laughs> But this is some of the, the idea behind this space. But this space would be open, or the way I envision it, that this space would be open all the time, not just Friday nights for the teens. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's a lot of adults, young adults, that actually like to play video games. Maybe they want to come in and do some sort of challenge or some sort of event. Um, but this, this space would be, or maybe somebody wants to teach the teens how to play pool, because they really don't. Um, <laughs> So again, what went into that size rectangle that we showed in that earlier diagram? Well, here we are, kind of like the exercise room. Um, we're, we're kind of laying out the, the pieces of uh, what I call equipment that would go into this uh, lounge. So a ping pong table, air hockey, a pool table, foosball. Um, we're showing these, this diagram, uh, this little symbol here is meant to show kind of soft seating in a curve that would be um, in front of um, a couple big monitors, so that would be what we call a gaming alcove. Um, so we have a couple of those, some little cafe seating, a lot of storage, soft seating, one big open room, flexible, um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of the preliminary idea behind that. And then the next space after the game room is the community room. Um, and this is uh, another, probably this is the second largest space that we're showing in after the gymnasium. And this is meant to be um, a large, open, flexible space, not like this room with the raked seating, but something that would have a flat floor that would have a large um, storage room attached to it for tables and chairs. It's meant to be a flexible space, so it could be for a lecture, uh, a program, a performance, a large meeting, even smaller meetings, and I'll show you how we could do that. Um, the chairs and tables in here would be stackable, lightweight, um, folding tables to con say, or, or flip tables to conserve space, um, probably a lot of natural light. This space does not need to be connected to the gymnasium, but it should be close to the main entry. And here are the diagrams of what that community room, how it could be laid out. So you're actually seeing, why did we draw three rooms here? Well, it's because we're thinking that we could put um, movable dividers, um, and these would be acoustical dividers, so when you, when you um, retract it, um, it would um, acoustically separate the spaces, so you could take one space that might have seating for up to 250 people for a large uh, performance. You could take that and subdivide it into two spaces. These are, these are little symbols for tables and chairs here. Um, and this is an example of how this tables and chairs could be set up. This would be maybe a banquet or something like that. This might be a class. And then you could also subdivide it into three spaces. Um, so here's that one divider used here plus one more. So this could be a meeting, this could be a class, this could be a small lecture. Um, a, lot of, a lot of flexibility in this space. So currently in our community room, it divides into two separate spaces. Um, a, a lot, it's a smaller, it's a small space, a lot smaller than this. Um, when we do performances in there, it can only seat up to 70 people. And then it's standing room only after that. Um, not only that, that's the only the that's the maximum amount of chairs that we have. <laughs> so um, so so this would be great to do our performances. They're actually um, they're moving them away from the community center, and their performances are in Abington now, just because they've gotten so big. So you know, it'd be great to have them back in Rockland because they're they're our kids. Um, but then, you know, in some instances, we have actually held space, we have a space down in the basement that is part of the teen center, but it's an open space. We've used that as a classroom, along with um, our soft seating for our teen center that you saw that picture with the, um, the black chairs. We, have, we moved that heavy furniture aside and set up tables. 
But so this would be great. We could have two Girl Scout troops in there doing what they do, and then we could have a classroom. Or I could run three classes um, and then and also have a couple of other classes in the gymnasium, whereas now we're kind of turning away programs because we just don't have the space for it. I think the key to these kind of spaces is flexibility. Yeah. So. For sure. Uh, and then the next grouping of spaces, um, walking you through the building here, is um, the cafe, kitchen, and multi-purpose room. These, as you can see, are, are much smaller spaces than the community room and the gym. Um, and they're all kind of, uh, they have lines between them because they're, they function together kind of as, as a unit. I'll show you how that might look. Um, here's some examples of what we were thinking of how a cafe space could overlook the gymnasium. Um, so this would be a great space for, our, for parents to wait as programs would finish. Um, it, this would be something kind of an, an example of the cafe. And then the, this is an example of, uh, of another project that has a, um, a multi-purpose room with stacking chairs. Um, it could be used for birthday parties, um, uh, accommodate 15 to 20 kids or, or, or adults in a meeting situation. So just to the whole thought process behind this, we have a lot of birthday parties at the community center and if you want yours there, you can have it. But um, right now you'll be sitting in the hallway eating your cake and ice cream. We don't actually have a space um, to put the kids in. But we, in addition to that, the only meeting space that we have during programs is actually in my office, which is about three folding tables, but you need to sit against the storage that we currently have because my, it triples. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a, a, a blow up of the plan of those three spaces and how they kind of work together as one. Uh, so here on the top of the plan, you see the cafe and it could have a direct connection to the gym or it could have a glass wall like that, that um, picture that I just showed you that overlooks the gym. Um, we're showing uh, about 30 tables, uh, 30 seats here. It could be more or less than that. Um, here is the multi-purpose room. We're thinking it would be, these would be folding tables and chairs or, or flip tables. Um, and it could have a big door, like a barn door um, that would retract and make these rooms kind of open up to each other if that was, um, if you needed kind of spillover space. And then there would be a small kind of kitchen cafe serving counter area. Um, and Jean, you want to describe what might happen there? Right. So um, we have a we have a cooking program. We have actually a couple of cooking programs, um, and uh, that we're not able to always house, and we're not able to. We don't have an oven to use. We don't have adequate sinks. I mean, we have a sink, but it's not as big as these sinks would be. Um, so that space would be used for those cooking classes. And then um, also our teen center actually runs a snack shack. Um, so we're kind of hoping that that would be open almost on at least five days a week, if not six or seven. And so that cafe area would be able to serve food. And then the last, uh, the last grouping of spaces on the, on the building tour here is the, um, what we're calling the maker room. With its, um, with its attached um, storage space. So the maker room is really kind of a, a fancy name for an art room um, or a space to kind of experiment. And um, uh, it's really a multifunction space. We, we've designed a lot of maker rooms um, for different, um, for different uh, buildings. Uh, there's uh, jewelry making, there's quilting, there's um, painting, um, we see a lot of um, uh, making things out of recycled uh, materials. Uh, we get a lot of, um, some of our projects get a lot of um, donations um, for recycled materials and it's just a great way of, of repurposing um, those, uh, those uh, pieces into, into cool objects. Um, so here's a few examples from some of our other projects um, where we've used um, like butcher block tables, um, uh, these, uh, and you can see things like a, a 3D printer and um, like a slop sink and storage. We even have like a green screen wall for doing videos. It's really just kind of an experimental space. 
it's not a large space, but it would be um, it would be the kind of space that would uh, that could get messy. It would have a, a floor that's easy to clean, um, and it would have its own kind of ventilation system um, uh, attached to it. And here's kind of a, the blow up of what that space might be look look like. It's um, uh, we're showing uh, kind of uh, three groupings of tables that could be broken out into um, six tables. Uh, drying racks, a big kind of smart, uh, a smart TV so that you could do some instruction there. Um, lots of storage. Storage is key for these kind of things so that you don't take up all your usable s uh, square footage with, um, with supplies. Um, so this, the, the supplies would be in its own storage room that could be controlled and secured. That was my last one. So, no, this is my last one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this has been, so we're, again, we're just starting. We wanted to show you these spaces to kind of illustrate what kind of spaces we see for other recreation buildings in other communities. But the goal of this project is to design a building, plan for a building that fits your community. So we'll be interested to hear your feedback. Um, and, uh, you know, in the end, designing a building that is um, that meets the needs of, of all ages um, of the town and is flexible because we're always, we don't know what's out 10 years on the horizon. And, um, and really, it's, it's a great opportunity. We think that it can um, be a really good addition to Hearts of Park um, and provide shelter for the programs that you already have, the outdoor programs. And at the same time, it can connect to those um, outdoor spaces from inside. So um, with that, um, we will take your questions. And we can back up to any slide. And um, we'll be interested to hear your thoughts. Or thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. We just need you to come up to the microphone. Oh, That's OK. It's, um, <laughs> The, it's being recorded, so that's okay. Thank you. So my question is, um, is it going to be one level with the walking track and the cafe overlooking the low level? That is a great level? question. That is a great question. So, um, you know, the, we were thinking the walking track would be at an, at an upper level, um, so it's not, you know, not getting um, kind of the risk of a ball hitting you <laughs> as you're walking around. Um, so if we do that, it would make sense to locate other, other building functions at an upper level as well. When we do that, we can make the building footprint a little bit smaller so it won't take a, up as much space at the, in the park. So there, there are pros and cons to that. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're building a two-story building, you need stairs and an elevator, and it has to be fully accessible. Um, so that's something that would go into. But that's, that is a great question because that's the kind of big question thinking that we're doing that right now, and we haven't we haven't determined it. Yeah, and, and we'll be exploring both. We'll be looking at a one-story building versus a two-story building. We know in the park there are some wetlands, so we know we need to stay a certain distance away from the wetlands in the park. So that will also help determine how much field space is left over when we put the building down, so that you start to understand and parking. So we have parking, we have outdoor field space, and we have a building, and it's got to fit within a certain kind of dimension in the park. I'll just say one more thing about that. Um, the gym has to be a certain height for, for, for ball activities. And we can fit two floors of regular things like the maker room or the exercise room within that gym height. So just a two-story building doesn't mean it's taller than the gym. It would actually kind of fit within that same volume. Yes? Would this go back to the ceiling of the location in the yep. master plan option? Yeah, and that diagram was from the master plan, which we didn't do. But it is, um, it's kind of where they have designated the location for the building. Although we understand that there are probably wetlands very close to that location. <coughs> so we're not sure that it would end up in this location. Yes. Yeah, it's the red, yeah. <clears throat> Which is roughly the size of, of a, of a basketball, basketball court. court. Like a single yeah, basketball court. Yeah. Yes. That's my backyard. Yeah. 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 Yes. Is that extremely hot in the day? Uh, 
That's the parking that was shown as part of the master plan, and that, that we haven't um, we haven't explored the number of parking spaces. So um, that's something that we could take your input on. We're not really sure. Yep, we're not there yet. We have to we have to figure out what we want for the building, figure out where we could put it. So, so that's where, when we did the usage study for the um, park, that's where those architects put it. Um, but as we discover and we, we get, we do a little bit more digging, there's wetlands close to that. So it's not 100% that it's going to stay there, no. But it will be down in that lower level somewhere. I asked that same question. <laughs> um, so just to answer, I mean, it, it really is a little bit too early to, but there are ways to do construction so that it doesn't impede other programs um, and what that looks like right now. We don't know yet. I think so. Yep. Yep. Mm. Right. Mm. So that community room can be spread, set up for that type of a, a program, or we could use part of the gym. So if you have a, a full size gym and a half gym, we could set up, you know, a quarter of the gym with that. It, it may not have the swing set. Sorry, that's gone. And the slide, but um, but we can certainly put out. We have other things that we can do. And we actually have a toddler program um, run by Coach Katie, who's not here tonight. She's, oh, there she is, run by Katie. Um, so, and that's become very successful and it's in, it's in lieu of the program that we had up on the third floor. Yes. yes. It's a very good question, and we don't know the answer to that yet. Obviously, we would like not to clear trees. We don't want to create um, openness between backyards and this, so we would try to keep that privacy screen. Um, but we, we definitely need to look at kind of the areas, the parking, the field, all of that stuff comes into, you know, into play. That's why we're kind of trying to understand What's what the important. spaces are in the building because those determine the size of the building and the size of the building determines where we can fit it on the site. So, yes. Yeah, we will, we will absolutely, this is honestly very early in the study. So our goal is to definitely develop it so we understand the parking requirements, the field site, you know, all of that stuff. So there will be, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be a, a, yep. a report at the end which will document all of that. So, you, so there will be another Yes, uh, yeah, yep. I think, yeah. Okay. So yes, there there really isn't a lot of property in town. Um, the other thing that we could do is renovate the current community center. Um, like I said, back in 2019, that was $23 million. So today, I don't even know the cost of construction and I'm not even gonna guess, but it's gone up. It's gone up quite a, a significantly. 
So hoping that this building wouldn't be that expensive. That's something we'll look at for that second meeting. That's a good point. Yep. What is the, um, what does it look like for staff and other residents? Is that when I, when I see the Zoom Center there, it's like we have the Zoom Center open for three hours and we have a handful of people there that are yep. doing those hours. So when I see that Zoom Center, it looks great, but I think, is that in three hours? <laughs> Yeah, those are all great questions. Um, so currently, what we we have a lot of part-time people, and we have a lot of part-time people because we pay them out of a revolving account. Um, so this size building, I haven't dove into that completely, but yes, there's going to take a little bit more staff to do it. Um, our security system, the camera system, the way that the building is designed, you you may not need as many people as you would think because you're if you're overlooking a gym. And you're sitting in you're in a cafe or you're in a room then you don't necessarily need five people you know at the teen center where you need to be stationed at the bathrooms you need two people in the gym you need one person in the blue room and then you need another person doing the cafe table and then you need another person making sure that the art supplies don't go everywhere so yeah maybe not as many Yep, so that's a great question. Um, so currently we don't rent our gymnasium. It's not, it's not rentable because of the floor, because of the height of the ceilings. It's also an elementary sized gym. So it doesn't generate revenue in that respect. Um, we do run our programs in there. Um, and that is revenue coming into the building. Um, it's more or less servicing the community. So what we can't do is, I think I mentioned, we can't, we can't really do pickleball. The floor is very slippery. Um, it's not even a gymnasium floor. It's a tile floor. And then um, uh, I forgot the second half of that question. It was a very long question, Scott. So, <laughs> Other rental. so I mean, do we? Oh, yeah. So in, in the future, yes. So we hope that youth sports are able to use it. Um, girls softball actually does use our gymnasium, even though it's a small size. We do have a batting cage in there for them. So they use that with the little guys. And then with the older kids, um, they do a little bit of pitching and stuff like that in there. Um, but, you know, going forward, it would be great. If we had two gym full gymnasiums, could we rent them? Absolutely, you can do tournaments in them. But then we have to look at the parking down at Hearthstuff Park, like you guys were asking. So is it feasible to put in two gymnasiums? Maybe one and a half. Well, then I can run three volleyball, three, I can run three volleyball courts at the same time. So can I run a volleyball tournament? Yep, I absolutely can. Um, so there are different ways to use all of the space that we have um, simultaneously. Um, you know, I, I, I think um, what I've heard uh, most recently is that the 50 plus community, and, and I'm not talking folks that are going to the Council on Aging, but they're coming home from work and sitting on their couch and they have nothing to do. Well, there's only so much space in McKinley now and I can't run a lot of the adult activities that I'd like to run because of the space that I'm in. Sorry.
Yeah, you right. can. You yeah. Randolph has an intergenerational um, facility that they just built probably about five years ago now. I think it was six. I don't know yeah. something something around those lines. But they have something very similar to this. It's and it is intergenerational. They don't have a council on aging or a senior center. So that might be something that you take a look at. Um, Pembroke is in the process of building an intergenerational community center. Norwell is going through a feasibility study to build a uh, intergenerational facility. And there was one more. I can't remember. Hmm. Yeah, you can check out those towns. Yeah. Well, and we visited Randolph with Jean, and, that, and it's got a lot of similarities. Um, the program is similar, so mm -hmm. it's, that's a, maybe a good one close by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. One question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if this would be good work, but have you guys considered outside the pool? No. Oh, oh for outside? So um, I'm looking at Richard because he's our park commissioners, and, and so they. At this time, no, not there. Mm -hmm. No. A pool. The pool's been on the uh, town radar for <laughs> forty plus years. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to go in between the high school, the high school, and the old junior high. It was supposed to go in there many moons ago. Are you saying you don't like our pond? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just kidding. kidding. Come on. Have you checked out the basketball court? Because there's probably, last time, um, well, one of the kids told me that they had a really great tournament going on down there. It was, it was with about 30 kids. Um, I, I missed it. I said, next time, call me. Hmm. And uh, this was at Hartsuff Park oh, at the yeah. new basketball. So you're right. And, and I know everyone thinks that kids are always on their phone, just so you know, um, down at the teen center and, a, and different, different other times when we see the kids, they're not always on their phone. They actually do sit there and converse with one another. So it's a really important, um, especially these days where they are so tied to their phones that they actually see each other face to face. They don't sit there, maybe they do sit there and text each other, but for the most <laughs> part, they, they hang out talking and it's usually on a floor somewhere. <laughs> That's a great question. It is. And, and it comes like the farmer's market we yeah. talked about too. So it's, I think it's really what we're kind of hoping is suggestions on what other, what other things could happen here. Yeah. You know, so Ooh. we've talked about the farmer's market. We've talked about youth basketball yeah. tournaments, the outdoor field connection to the, to the center itself. Uh, the fact that if there is a center here, it would provide um, bathrooms so that they're not porta potties. So you could, you know, it would service the greater park as well. 
But other suggestions on what other activities might happen here, I think, would be yeah. great to hear. Uh, concerts, plays. Yeah. Um, there can, there's it ha there's a, a lot of different events that could happen. We, um, we saw in Randolph, and there's actually another community center that has it, they have their gym doors actually open into a field. And so if it's raining outside, they do their concerts inside so people can come in and out through their, uh, through their gymnasium. So it's kind of a, a cool feature. Yeah, we, we, we talk mm. about that a lot because it's, could the building actually act as part of the park, right? It's it's yeah. real supportive of the park. It's not <laughs> just this freestanding community center somewhere, but it becomes the backdrop for kids playing soccer or baseball on the field. You have a place to kind of sit and maybe the cafe's open and you can go get something to eat while your kids are playing sports. So. Or you can do what I did and, you know, in several of these skating rinks, I worked while my kid was on the ice skating um, so you hook up to Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. you can work away mm -hmm. especially if you're like I don't even oh she's not here but um, there's one woman that has back-to-back -back programs so I think she spends about three hours at the community center I'm like you can go to Target she's like yeah I'll just hang out here <laughs> so Um, we did put it on WRPS, we put it out on social media, and then we emailed it out to our database that we have. Um, but I can, I can look, what? Oh yeah, you can also oh, yeah. sign in, yeah. I can send you an email. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I can, sure. No, we just, I mean, the, the spaces that you see are the spaces that I thought of. And, the, and what I've collected over the years, talking to people in the community, um, talking to my staff, and just knowing what we can't do. So thinking that out and thinking it through with several people that are in this room, this is what we came up with. Um, yeah, and, and you know, and I'm open to suggestions, or you're, you're thinking that we don't need a certain space, then okay, then... I'm okay with that. What will happen to Mary Mass when this gets built? That's a great question. Yeah, Doug can answer that. That's right. So um, I, it would be great if we get to that. Who asked the question? So my dad could be Nancy. Back. So if we get to that point where we have a concrete proposal based on public input, uh, we bring it to town meeting, uh, it would most likely require a ballot vote to to fund it. So let's say we we get authorization to build the building. Well, uh, I suspect, and I, I say suspect because no decisions have been made yet on what happens to the current McKinley building. My recommendation to the Board of Selectmen would be that we ask town meeting for approval to sell the building. So if town meeting agrees to sell it, um, there's a, a process that the state requires. It's not like private real estate transactions where you just do a purchase and sale. It has to be uh, an RFP, with criteria that gets publicly advertised. And so my recommendation would most likely be um, to structure an RFP, a request for proposal, to sell it to a developer. It would have some kind of combination of mixed use, some residential, maybe some kind of commercial on the ground floor, something that would fit uh, within Union Street. Uh, the building's on a, a National Register of Historic Places for the exterior, so keep the facade so it looks the same on the outside but they would completely gut the inside. 
And again, there's a housing shortage, so I'm guessing some combination of housing, a little bit of commercial, get it back on the tax rolls. Um, but there'd be a whole process to get to that point. And, and if we were fortunate enough to get to that point, the money that the town would receive from selling that building could be used directly to offset the debt for the construction of the new building. Gotcha. Yeah. So is that mm -hmm. something that could be planned into the cost of it? Like so ahead of time? Yeah, so the way it would work would be we get, these are, this is a great question. I hope, again, I hope we get to this point. Um, once we know the exact cost, we would ask for that total amount to be approved by voters. So we have that total amount to able to be funded. We have the authorization. But you don't borrow that whole amount right at once. You kind of borrow as you go along. So then um, at some point later, uh, if we are able to sell that building, that money just gets used to offset that debt service. And then people don't ever get taxed for that or their taxes will go down for that piece. So it, it will happen, but you can't guarantee that we're gonna have that amount and borrow that much less because that's just too many to actually have to have everything. Right. So it's something you could say set up <coughs> if contingent on the sale of this money going towards it. Um, um, so you're saying like a, a, a town meeting vote to say we want authorization to build this building, but it's contingent on selling the old building. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? Because the only thing to make sure of is that we need, we can't displace the current programs until the right. new building's all exactly. done. Right. Mm -hmm. And but you know, there's I'm sure there's ways. If, um, I guess to see like what the value is, all that. Do you know a ballpark of what the building's worth? Yeah. Well, we could certainly have an appraisal done, yeah. so we so we know what mm -hmm. the appraised value is mm -hmm. of that building, and it'll be interesting to see what that is because on the one hand. It's a big historic building, prime real estate, so you think there's a lot of value. On the other hand, the whole thing needs to be completely gutted and rehabbed, mm -hmm. so there's a huge expense going in. So what the net of that is, we'll just see what an appraiser right. said, but mm -hmm. that's something we can certainly get later. Mm -hmm. Sure. So now that the issue of, of cost has come up, what is an optimistic depreciation? Percentage-wise, maybe, what do you hope to like get into a grant So there, it, currently today, there is no um, grants to build a new community center. Um, there's nothing in the works with the federal government um, to, to, for any of the municipality buildings. So it's not, and we're not the only ones with this problem with aging buildings and no funding for it. So, um, you know, I suggest to you that you could probably reach out to your representative and maybe pose that question to the representative. What is how can they help, right? I ask because I feel the need to know, but I also ask because I know that there'll be times when I want to share that information, because I have neighbors, I have family members who are already asking, well, how much are our taxes going to go up? And I would love to be able to yeah. tell them, oh, wow, well, you know, we have this plan in place, because obviously, like, COVID caused them, but all the problems would really benefit from this. And I feel like if we're here and we're learning good things to learn, I would love to have some, <laughs> some good things to share when they have some bad mm -hmm. things to say. <laughs> and to, to that point, when, when we get to the point later where we, we have a, a, the architects come up with a real design and we have an independent cost estimator that can accurately estimate the cost of construction, then we'll have cost impacts. We'll, we'll, we'll provide the, you know, the average value house and it cost you this much more per year in taxes for this bit. So we'll, we'll have all the information later. We just, we just not at that point. Okay. You won't be alone, Lauren. There was a question in the back, right? I haven't addressed that with the schools. We've addressed it with the community center and um, the only transportation is to and from daycare that's currently housed at the community center. Um, so that was a no-go for me um, when I had asked them. It was several years ago. Um, I'd actually asked the teens to be um, brought over because that's the underserved part of the youth community is, is our teens. 
Oh, you'd be surprised <laughs> at the bikes that come through there. <laughs> Just getting back to the, the cost question you had a minute ago, because I probably should be more explicit about it. And to Jean's point, you know, there's the, the Mass School Building Authority to build schools, just like the new elementary school, we probably half of that, and we got $35 million from the state to contribute toward that. Same thing with libraries, there's the Mass Board of Library Commissioners, they help fund library construction, but they don't have those similar types of programs for community centers or fire stations, other but systems. But they have a library and a school. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a library and all my street. So, um, so, you know, I, I think that the most honest way to answer the question is, if, if we get to this point, we'll propose it as a debt exclusion requires ballot in town meeting by voters. It raises your taxes for the life of that loan, for the life of the bond, and then those taxes go back down once the bond is paid off. During that time, if there's ever grants that the town is able to get, which can help offset some of that cost, then there's that much less that we borrow and that much less that gets put on the property tax burden. But I do want to be honest about it. That's, that's going to have to be the primary source of funding. Um, so the plan, you, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I was told. There is a plan to move Rockland Daycare. Um, they're just not sure where it would either be high school or Eston, but that's a great question for the school committee. But it Anyone else have any thoughts on spaces that, yep, go ahead. Uh, that triggers a, a, a whole other type of kitchen that um, you, we would need a grease trap. There's certain regulations around it, but certainly something to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, obviously, as you're thinking, maybe the town should have the kitchen table. Yeah. I think I think I think we yeah <laughs> that's up to our town moderator. I'm, I'm looking at Doug because I'm not really sure the inner workings of um, town meeting, but um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to I it. Mean at the town meeting, I'm just saying I've seen how those kind of play out. Yep. And, uh, and as a as a architecture firm, we'd be more than happy to kind of entertain questions from kids in the community. I think it would be really wonderful. You know, most kids don't know what architects do, so it would be fun for us to talk about it and and allow them to give us some input on what they want in a new community center. So if any of you kids out there want to <laughs> ask about the community center, what what do you want in in your community center? Think about it, and maybe we'll have a we can have a separate mm -hmm. meeting. And mm -hmm. if, any, if kids want to kind of attend, that'd be great. Well, I see a Love Celtic shirt. So. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> you know, a dunkable rim. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. we could do that. The, the, that's the, that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we could have a little kind of mini presentation workshop almost. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, we do have some community. I'm just going to throw it out there. We do have some community events that are coming up that we could possibly, um, where more people are gathering, such as the arts festival that's here at the high school. Um, so we, we rock one day. We have a couple of other events coming up that we can talk to people about that. So I think the gentleman Sorry. in the back. You can't ask that, Mike. No, you can only ask your own question. So I think I know the answer already, but I was asked why the Green Bay Lake District is special to the city of Green Bay. Uh, that's what they asked. So uh, what does it mean when you think about the city of Green Bay Lake? And um, maybe for the next day, uh, I know this is probably going to get brought up by some people, but I can speak to that, and you know, Julie may <coughs> feel free to correct me if you guys don't agree with what I'm going to say. Um, two things. One is both of the Memorial Park School and the Jefferson School are really past the end of their useful life. That's why we're building a new school, because those schools are really done physically. They're just done. The, the other legal issue is where we built the new elementary school was technically on park land, land controlled by the Parks Commission. So under Article 97 of the state constitution, there had to be a land so there was an actual technical legal land swap between the, the school department and the parks commissioners because when you took away that parkland where the field was, where the new elementary school is, the, the new parkland has to get replicated. And that's going to be where Memorial Park is now. That's where the turf field is going to be that Rick Furlong mentioned. And then Jefferson will be demolished and a park will be built there. So, and it's literally a law. That land swap is a law that gets signed in a law by the state legislature and signed by the governor. So the buildings are too old, and we couldn't even if we wanted to because we had to replicate the new park land to replace the park land being taken over by the new school. Hmm. And the, the Essence School is still under school control. So there's no way we could add on to that gym. So what would you guys say about the gym? Well, if we would add on to that gym, there'd be no pocket because that's where the pocket lot is. And right now, when they, ha when they have their soccer down there on Saturdays, uh, well, weekends and nights, it's limited. There'd be no programs. There'd be no other programs other than the use of the gym too, because that space has already been, um, des or is going to be designed for other uses. Um, I see that you had changes in the gym. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I put the slide at the end. I just, uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah. Will this show up if I do yeah. this? No, it's, it's on. Yeah, okay. So, um, these are just a few. Uh, we didn't give this a whole part of the presentation because I yeah. thought it was kind of uh, minor, but it might be important to talk about. This, these are three s very small rooms, um, small types of rooms that we were including in that overall diagram. Uh, that, that probably are worth mentioning. So um, one is besides the kind of the multi-fixture men and women's rooms that uh, would kind of handle the occupancy of, of like the community room if there was a, a lecture or a program. Um, we are going to have a couple um, uh, family restrooms, so big enough for a stroller. Um, we might have the two, both the children's and adult size to toilets in there. Um, it's a small space, relatively speaking, in the overall scheme of things. Um, then we thought we would also have um, a small um, breastfeeding or, or mother's room um, with changing table there um, that isn't part of a restroom um, because there's a lot of families um, using these spaces. And then last thing on the far right, um, we were thinking instead of typical locker rooms, you know, all the lockers and all the toilets and the showers in big one big space for men and for women. Um, we thought instead we could explore the idea of having 
a few, a handful of smaller um, gender neutral changing rooms that would have their own shower, toilet and sink, and a bench. <coughs> lockers would be outside that space, so you're not taking up the valuable space in the room with the lockers. And we think that by having uh, maybe six of these in the building um, that would be kind of located between the exercise room and the gym, it would probably be more useful than those typical larger um, locker rooms. So again, it's kind of a small space, a little over 100 square feet, um, but uh, we thought it would be kind of more appropriate. Uh, they seem to handle the lot. They actually have the smaller rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, and a family could use that yeah. same room, um, but it's not, yeah, it's just, I think it's a little bit more uh, family friendly and, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What was the capacity outside of the building? Will most of the sides where it's going to be built, will that be considered a playground there? Is that another company that we can use? Well, that's part of what we will do, but, but since this is a feasibility study, we're, we're not going to design and detail it completely. This is more to kind of understand the massing and really what it gets down to is the cost. So, and, um, and where it can go on the site. And where it can go on the site. So, so we will, um, you know, part of this one story versus two story, that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. We'll, we'll probably propose some materials for the building and, and a roof line and things like that. Um, we're going to be looking at how it fits into the site um, and the tree line and things like that. So to answer your question, we're not going to get super specific. You're not going to say oh, this is exactly what's going to be built as part of our preliminary work here. But it should give you a sense as a community to say, okay, I kind of understand what kind of building this is. Right. And, and it's probably going to end up closer to the current parking than it will where the playground is. No, I don't, th I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no, um, there's no, no space. No, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah, it's too close to the wetland area. That's yeah. The yep. playground is too close to the wetland Yeah. So you couldn't, you can't build in that area. That's right. The so playground. Yep. It's, it's <coughs> actually the, <coughs> there, take this, this is the plane. Where is it? Oh, the little, is it on that? It's, it's just here. How does it work? Go ahead, you can point <laughs> to it. So this, there's, um, I think the playground's right in here. No, right? it's up where that, right there. Oh, right here. The okay. That's yeah, the yeah. current playground. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we would be, we would most likely be looking at kind of the area in here for a building. And there's a stream that runs through here. Um, and there's kind of wetland on either side of that we have to stay away from. And we're still getting that delineation. We haven't gotten yeah, the we're, wetland Yeah, we're going to get the, yet. There, it's in process right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is from the master plan, okay. and so we're sharing this is because they there was a recent master <coughs> plan done. They designated this area, which is literally just the size of one court. You know, so this building would, would be, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to look at what that yeah. footprint ends up being, because if it's two stories, it's one thing. If it's one story, it's even a bigger <coughs> footprint. And I assume it's on white line at the top. That's mm. So, no. The outside no. white line is the property. No, well, yeah. most of it is, but the new, act, the new property we picked up is not on, is considered in that area, but we can't build another thing there. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> and there, there are other kind of obstacles. There's, there's a bit of a hill here that we can't build and on. And trees. The trees, kind of where that, mm -hmm. that's difficult to build on. Um, this is a very tight road going in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Yep. Uh, there is also probably gonna be the need to make sure that a fire engine can service this. So we have to look at kind of from what direction they were coming. Yep, that's, so that's part of the master plan is to widen that road. 
Um, it's in the works. I, I think well, emergency vehicles would have to have a second way out, and they'd have to be able to access the field too, where you know uh, ambulance needs to get to the field if there's an injury. So we have to kind of look at where the building is relative to that as well. Yeah. From the back side of it, looking at it. Well, <coughs> okay. See this area right here is we just acquired this right there. So it's a completely all wetland. So there will be no building in that area. So that will come into effect. There is another entrance that comes in right here. Right there. Whether that gets used or not, at this point, no one knows. Um, and like they've said, we've looked at, we had one meeting and we've had this whole area and the building's been moved around different areas, get different views. But nothing's been determined because we don't have the size of the building yet. Get an idea of what size building, and they could we can fit it mm -hmm. in that spot. Do you, do you think it's possible to fit it in that spot? That's part of the feasibility a study. Picture looks How feasible, good. Yeah. A picture looks good. <laughs> Anything can fit in a picture. But once you get the size, and then we know what we're dealing with for land, like they said, we're still getting the wetlands, what we where we can and can't build. Once we get that, we'll get an idea of what, mm -hmm. how big of a space that we're dealing with. Right, and <laughs> then we can see if the building will fit. Wait. And w and we're looking to put a, a real field here too, like a full size football field. So yeah, yeah. we don't we don't want to lose the field that we have there now. Yeah. We can't afford to lose. We don't have enough. Is it hundred yards or is that too much? Too much it's roughly it's roughly the, it's roughly the size. They they play they play youth football usually mainly for practice. This would be a practice field, not a full game field because nice you know we had well, we had a softball but. Nobody used it, so we turned it into a multi-use field. Um, but the field has to stay at some point because we do need the space. But like they said, uh, they're flagging the wetlands now. That'll tell us what we can build on, and then we'll get an idea what we need for a building, mm -hmm. and then we can measure it all up and see where we go. Because a picture, you know, looks great until you go over right. and put that. <laughs> Expand it to trails, but it's wetlands. We can't build on it, but we can use it for walking trails and stuff like that. That that property, yes, that's the old um, Don Robbins warehouse, and yes, that is in use. And there's a house to the left of that. There is a house, and yes, people do visit. Yeah, the one with the drive-through high stuff going right. Yeah. Okay, I, I always see it. <laughs> yeah, people. That's that's one of the Robbins that lives in there. That's their old warehouse that they have since sold. And um, I think it's a woodworking shop. Yep. Or a um, boxing place out of it now. Where? Where is it? At, at the end of Hartford Street, that's an old warehouse. You don't point to it, I think. I don't yeah. know where people know are talking. <laughs> oh, uh, where? Yeah. Top? No, the trailer up top? Way up? This is what Bridget's talking about. Yeah, way up top. No, nobody's up there. I'm talking about the brown house in the top right. No, nobody's there. The trailer. Trailer's gone. Trailer's going to be gone. And the other one is um, the bathhouse. The bathhouse. Oh, okay. I'm assuming the building would have to be in the HPA. Well, we don't, we don't have the space for that. We don't have the space for that. <laughs> 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 what happens if the trailer doesn't fit? I mean, I know this is a great place and it's a great idea. What happens if you don't have enough space to fit the trailer? Well, the only option would be then to downsize the building. Right, like, so one, yeah, the, as you saw from that initial diagram, the biggest chunk of space is for the gymnasium. So we might go to a single, single gym. Instead of a one and a half or two. Well, and we want to be, right. And we want to hear from you, the community, say, like, if you were to say, we have to absolutely have two two yeah, gems or two we two yeah then that would have been good information it would have been really you know something that we would there. have to pr prioritize so, so you, you see you <clears throat> looking at this picture what percentage of it or what like what parts of it is wetlands that's being done now not We're not having, currently having engineers yeah, yeah. yeah. Have 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 they're and delineating the wetlands and then there's a setback from the wetlands that's never been done <clears throat> 
We no, have because we've not, because we never looked at it before a building. So we have we can get some crude data from from uh, online sources, but it's not actually something that we can really scale off of and trust. So we have a general idea where they are, um, as you do too. Um, but um, we'll we'll have exact data very shortly. When, yeah. when I was there, um, let's see, right, was it after Thanksgiving, before Thanksgiving, um, just on a random weekday, um, yeah, there, there were a lot of kids on the basketball court. It was really, yeah, it was yep, kind of cool. It was really cool to see it, yeah. see it used on a kind of a cold day. <laughs> well, it was, it was a half day. It was, yeah. Oh, was that I think a half it day? it was a half day. Oh, okay. We were there on a half day, so the bikes started flying in and cars and <clears> kids were getting dropped off, so. So uh, actually, I, we planned for that. We, we did plan for that. Um, unfortunately, I can't, do, I can't do it for free. It is a cost. So we did plan for it um, to utilize our gym at McKinley. <coughs> but we, had, we didn't really have any registrations for those half days. Um, but a lot of the kids don't like the gym because of the way that the basketballs bounce and the rims that we have and the ceiling height and yeah. I, I got it I got a year full on Friday night from a few of them, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but there are things we can do besides the gym, um, if if we're you know, if we have less space than we had hoped to place the building. We can make it a two story building. We can you know, make the game room a little smaller. We can make the community room a little smaller. There's, there's, you know, there's some flexibility, but we wanted to kind of hear from you if there are things that are, that shouldn't be on the table or not, or what, what are there spaces that are more important than others in the, in the building. To a pool? A lot. <laughs> you, you'll need a new rec director. I'm done. <laughs> it's enough to manage that pond and to find lifeguards for that. It's a thought. Anybody else have any ideas that they'd like to share? Can you go back to the like overall the sales plan again? Huh. Maybe the bubble. You're, right you're kind to say it's detailed. It's not really oh. detailed. Perfect. Right there. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> so these are this this is as if it's a one story building. Um, kind of just extruded out. So so here you see things like the, the family toilet, the mother's room, um, we have some offices, um, storage for gym equipment and the maintenance storage, you know, things that, this is the grouping of changing rooms. It's shown as one rectangle, um, but it would be, like I said, probably composed of those smaller um, individual rooms, um, which turns out to be uh, really not much, not any more space. Um, so I think they'd be more highly utilized. And, and things like the community art room, which came up as a suggestion, mm -hmm. those could, make those room. could, yeah, those could either. I mean, there's the maker room where you could actually have an art class, but there's also things like the lobby and the entry where you could use it as a, mm -hmm. as a temporary gallery yeah. for community art. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, and the idea for the outside access was kind of for the farmer's market and other, yeah. I think that was for our yard sign. Yeah, that was Jean's idea. <laughs> well, so in our master plan that we had done um, for Hearts Up Park, it was a completely separate building. It's, it's not necessary, not if we're able to build it and so we can utilize it for both indoor and outdoor. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, the cafe yeah. for sure. Yeah. Celtics. <laughs> Yes. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I know. Usually the outdoor rims are double rimmed and that's for a reason. It's for stability um, because it is an outdoor area. So indoor ones usually are. But you will be on my committee. That's right. You're, you're, you're hired. <laughs> Yes, um, there's going to be, these are kind of the primary connections. We're, we're going to have to do all of that. Um, and, and there are a lot more lines that are going to be uh, knitting together all these spaces in the end. Um, so yes, we'll, we'll want to make sure that they're all convenient to the restrooms. You had a question. Um, more of a comment than a question. Okay. Um, So that's a great question. I don't know until we build it and I dive deeper into all of those costs. So I need to know how big of a building it is in order to how and, and to know how to cover those costs. I can tell you right now that the building that we have is going to become obsolete sooner rather than later. So there won't be any recreational program. But I can also tell you that we're going to, if we do a new building, it's going to be better than the, what we have and it's going to be more economically, it's going to be more feasible for us to maintain it. So therefore, maybe those costs might be not reduced, but everything's going up. The I know. It's really the cost of the instructors. So what you're seeing now is the cost of the instructors and the cost of the employees to be at the building, because we can't leave the building unattended. Right. So that's what those <coughs> costs are for. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. So to check into a building now, I have to have somebody upstairs doing programs in the community room. I have to have somebody downstairs in the gym. And they're checking, physically checking people in on an iPad, which is an upgrade from our paper, right? Oh. But in this scenario, there are there's software out there where all you're doing is walking into the, b the building and your child is, or you, are scanning a fob, and now you're checked into your, your program. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need that extra person. I need one person there making sure that you're scanning your fob. Or card. That yeah, yeah, helps. Yeah. yeah, there's also, there's a lot of factors. So my background is hotel hospitality. <coughs> um, we call it turning and burning in, in the industry. So it's really turning over rooms as fast as you can in order to accommodate the next program that's coming in. Or in that case, it was the next event coming in. How can you tr best turn and burn? So um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that and the, the cost of each one of those programs coming in. What, what does that, the cost of that space actually, what is it? Because it becomes more of an open space and you can you can see everything that you don't have to have as many people in different locations to take care of 
Um, so right now, if I was to run a team program, I would need five people in my building in order to run that effectively, not to mention the fact that I have daycare in the building, so I need to think about security in that sense. Yep, there, there probably would be some sort of membership associated with that. I don't think, um, I think even in Randolph, the cost is not that much money to do a drop-in gym. But we can't even do that now. Our gym is used, so we don't have the ability to do drop-in gym. But if I had a gym and a half, yeah, absolutely. The kids could play on a half court, and I could split the other courts in half to run programs. Yeah, Thank you. Thank yeah you thanks all. for the feedback. Definitely. We'll um, we'll come back with some more definitive ideas. But thank you. Great. Thanks thank everyone. Thank you. If you want to sign um, the registration form, you yes. certainly can. I can email whatever. 88.3 WRPS Rockland.